including the pharmacist Terry May, officers Rule and Sorber, their families, and their colleagues. My thoughts and prayers have been with all of them over this past week. As for the events of Monday morning, they began just before 2.30 a.m. when a male suspect we now know to be Kelly Forte, 34 years of age, entered Walgreens, located at 1090 High Street. Shortly after entering the store, he was observed by another customer, jumped the pharmacy counter. That customer alerted store personnel to what he had observed, prompting the store manager to check on the pharmacist. The manager made voice-to-voice -voice contact with her but felt the circumstances were suspicious. The manager returned to the security office and began checking the store security cameras. During this time, the manager and the customer who had observed the suspect separately called 911. Several officers were dispatched, and while they were en route, the manager was able to pull up the pharmacy cameras and observe the suspect holding a knife to Miss May while removing money from a pharmacy register. The first HPD officer to arrive was Officer Sorber, and she was alerted to the fact that the suspect was in the pharmacy and that he was armed with a knife. That was a fact that she broadcast to her fellow officers. Officer Rule was the second officer to arrive and met Officer Sorber near the entrance to the pharmacy. They simultaneously entered the pharmacy by climbing over the counter. Once inside, they proceeded into the storage shelving area where very quickly they made contact with a suspect who was holding Mrs. May hostage. He was using her as a shield with a large knife to her throat. This is the knife that he held to her throat. It's a 10 inch fixed blade skinning knife with a gut hook. The presence of the officers caused the suspect to disengage from the hostage and move down the shelving row parallel to the officers with both officers mirroring his movement and officer rule shouting repeated commands to freeze stop. As the suspect gets to the main aisle, he begins charging towards the officers, again with a knife in his hand. Officer Rule gets to the main aisle with his weapon extended, ordering the suspect to put his hands up and to drop the knife. The suspect ignores the warnings and is quickly upon the officer, at which point Officer Rule fires two shots in rapid succession. The suspect stumbles continues forward down the aisle with Rule following behind him. While the suspect is partially down, Rule keeps his weapon covering the suspect but does not fire. As the suspect nears the drive through window and the exit door to the pharmacy, he regains his footing and while standing, turns at which point Rule fires a third and final time. The suspect begins to fall and Rule continues to cover him with his weapon until he goes down. Once the suspect no longer poses a threat, Rule reholsters his weapon and begins handcuffing him. Realizing the suspect is wounded, the officers on scene call for medical assistance and begin to administer aid. When the emergency medical service personnel arrive, they determine the suspect is deceased. The scene is held and the investigation commences immediately. At this time, I'll walk you through a presentation detailing some of the findings of the investigation, including still shots of the store surveillance video. And at the end of the presentation, I will play for you the video in its entirety. The video lasts approximately nine minutes from the time the suspect is first seen on the lot of the store until he's in custody.
It's the first slide, which indicates the location of the store and has the first call to 911 embedded. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Can I have my name, please? Can I have my name, please? What's your name? My name's Mary. Mary? Yes. Okay, and are you an employee, Mary? Yes, I am. What's going on? Um, I have a customer that just is going to visit somebody down to a pharmacy counter, and I cannot get it up on the cameras. And when I look at it, the uh, pharmacist says she's okay, but I can't see her. And the customer said that he saw somebody down to the pharmacy counter, so I'm just going to put it down there to make sure. Okay, so if you can't verify it through the Pharmacist, right? No, she was okay. back there. She said she was counting her C2s, but as I said, I swear I saw somebody jump back and jump the counter. I saw them jump their counter. Okay, we'll get them over there. All right, thank you. All right, bye. -bye. This next slide depicts the store and the second 911 call from the male customer. 911, what's the address of the emergency? Uh, Walgreens, the uh, counter. I think it's the main street. No, they're on Pine Street, the one there at the corner of... Um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they're on Pine Street. What's your name? Uh, Derek. I've seen him off the counter, and I'm one of the people that work there. And he's back there with one of the uh, workers. I don't know if he's got a gun, but he's back there with her. Is he driving her or anything? Did she tell? Uh, uh, it looks a little suspect. I'm not sure exactly what's okay. going on, but... They're on their way. Okay. All right. Okay, thanks. Bye. This next slide also depicts the store and contains the radio traffic of the officers being dispatched and responding. This traffic is compressed, so there, there is no blank airtime between the traffic, so it is not real time. Walgreens at the pharmacy customer said they just offered to check the counter. There you go, come back, come on. We're at this time where I'm sure what the pharmacist is doing if he's not back there. They're all the way around. Okay. Yes, they're fine. Be advised. Be advised the pharmacist is a female. The subject that jumped the counter was a male. Caller tried to call the pharmacist and she's not talking like everything's okay. Act like a girl. This slide depicts the layout of the pharmacy which is located in the northwest corner of the store. You'll notice it contains the receiving counter where folks pay for and receive their prescriptions, as well as a consultation counter where you can meet with a pharmacist to discuss uh, any issues. Both counters are the same height and both enter into the pharmacy area. Uh, these, the depiction here is of the suspect just after he's entered the consultation window and where the pharmacist was located working on the computer uh, when he entered the pharmacy. The suspect, again, is, Be is Kelly Brandon Forte, male, 34 years of age. He was armed with this fixed blade skinning knife with a gut hook. And this is the first still photo as he entered the pharmacy at approximately 228. He immediately confronts the pharmacist, placing the knife at her throat. There he has the knife 
blade at her throat. This is it, the register, where he has the knife to her back. You can clearly see it against her white lab coat. Here, now, almost nine minutes later, he still has her in the pharmacy, still has her at knife point, the tip of the knife at her throat. It's now 2.35. The first officers arrive, Officer Sorber and Officer Rule. This slide depicts their locations when they entered the pharmacy. Officer Sorber going in the same way that the suspect did, and Officer Rule going over the receiving counter. Just before the officers entered the pharmacy, the suspect had removed the victim. The pharmacist, Terry May, he had removed her uh, out of the pharmacy area and back to a, a break room in the back corner of the pharmacy. They had just reemerged from that room when the officers entered the pharmacy. Officer Kevin Rule, 33 years of age and a nine-year veteran in the Hamilton Police Department, Officer Sorber is 23 years of age. She's a one-year veteran in the Hamilton Police Department. As the officers enter the pharmacy, Officer Rule proceeds in this direction and takes position at the end of this aisle. Officer Sorber proceeds into the other aisle, stops short of the back aisle. Officer Rule immediately sees the suspect sees him holding her with his left hand, left arm, with this knife at her throat. She said that they had heard the officers entering the pharmacy. The suspect heard the movement, asked who it was. The pharmacist indicated she didn't know. And then the officers appeared. Officer Rule was the only officer that she could see she saw his full person. She clearly recognized that he was an officer. She described his height, his hair color, and his build. As soon as the officers contact the suspect, he begins to move down this aisle. He disengages with the hostage, moves down this aisle to the main aisle. As both officers mirror his movement, and also move towards this main aisle. This is a photo, still photo, where you can see the suspect, you can see Officer Sorber, and you can see the legs of Officer Rule where he's positioned. This represents the approximate location after the suspect begins to move to the main aisle where he charges towards the officer, the knife in his hand. And that's this photo here. You can clearly see the knife in his hand. He is darkly attired. He has dark pants, a dark jacket, a dark colored sock over his hand and the knife is all black, so it is difficult to make out, but you can clearly see the blade of the knife in his hand. You see Officer Sorber making her way to that main aisle, and then the next slide, you can see, begin to see Officer Rule's weapon as he's rounded the corner and standing in the aisle as the suspect charges down toward him. Officer Rule's weapon is up. The knife is in the suspect's hand. He's giving the suspect commands, telling him to drop the knife. Drop the knife. The suspect refuses the commands, continues, and Officer Rule fires two shots 
in rapid succession in this area right here. Once those two shots are fired, the suspect continues down that aisleway toward the drive through window and the exit toward the pharmacy. This diagram shows the door in an open position. The door is locked and secured during this incident. As the suspect continues down this aisleway, he staggers, he briefly stumbles, catches himself, but continues toward this area. Officer Rule follows in behind him. You can see the suspect, the top of his hat here, where he stumbled. He's knocked this phone. He's knocked this phone receiver off and stumbled. A third officer is arriving. Officer Rule is following the suspect. His weapon is covering the suspect at a downward angle as the suspect stumbles, continues to cover him until they arrive at this location over here near the drive through window and in a very close, tight area here just inside the exit door. Officer Rule fires the third and final shot. The suspect is located just off or outside the camera view. After he fires the shot at 237.08, he continues to cover the suspect as he's standing. And then the suspect begins to fall and officer rule covers him as he falls to the ground all the way into this position where he stays on the ground. At which point Officer Rule reholsters and immediately begins to take the suspect into custody. This is the video that has been sequenced. That is to say the original video from the store is 16 cameras, it's a multiplex video and each uh, part of this event is captured by different cameras. This is the video where all those cameras have been sequenced together so that you can watch an almost complete sequential order from the suspect being on the lot until he's in custody. There, there is at least one moment where the video backs up slightly as it changes from one camera to the other and I'll point that out when we get to that but I'm going to play the video all the way through at this time. That's the suspect on the lot at 226.13. The pairs enter the store. He enters the store with his right hand in his pocket. Just enters the pharmacy and immediately confronts the pharmacist, producing the knife, placing it at her throat.
initially demands drugs. He asks for Vicodin and Percocet. The pharmacist complies. He has her bag the drugs up. In addition to threatening her with a knife, he tells her that he has a handgun in his pocket and that if she resists, he'll shoot her. These gaps in the video where there is no, none of the cameras have captured anything relevant. That's the store manager. After being alerted by the other employee that a customer had seen somebody enter the pharmacy, she went back to check. She calls out and the pharmacist answers, tells her she's okay, but the manager senses that something's not quite right. It's about two minutes into this ordeal for the pharmacist at this point. The suspect's been on the lot for two minutes. He's been in the pharmacy terrorizing this woman for two minutes at this point. Back in the security office, the store manager is trying to pull up the cameras. There is a delay initially. This is now a little over five minutes into the incident. He's now demanding money from the registers. At this point, the manager has been able to pull up the security cameras sees the suspect in the pharmacy, sees that he has a knife. She calls 911. The customer who had witnessed him jump the counter has called 911. That's Officer Danielle Sorber. She's the first officer to arrive. A customer who called 911 is out front of the store and begins to engage the officer as she arrives. Suspect is forcing the pharmacist at knife point to that back room.
This is where Officer Sorber is informed that the suspect is still in the pharmacy and that he, had, he is armed with a knife. She relays that via her radio to the other officers. That's Officer Rule. He arrives. They direct him to the pharmacy. Officer Sorber is assessing the situation. At some point, she hears a voice. She knows that they're back there. Her and Officer Rule simultaneously enter the pharmacy. From the time they enter until the time he's in custody, it's about eight seconds. First two shots, suspect stumbles, it's covered. Gets back up, turns, the officer files, fires the third and final round, covering him as he goes to the ground and immediately taking him into custody. Before I take a couple questions, I want to point out a couple things that uh, that you've seen in the video. Uh, first, is this was not just an armed robbery. A robbery is where someone makes a demand, possibly displays a weapon, gets what they came for, and leaves. This suspect was in the pharmacy for nine minutes. Nine agonizingly slow, terrifying minutes for Terry May. You've been listening into live coverage. He doesn't just rob her, he terrorizes her. He kidnaps her, takes her out of the pharmacy into a back room, brings her out of that room, holds her hostage. What his intentions were are not clear, but what Miss May believed was that he was going to harm her. Her comment was he had all the drugs that he'd asked for, he had all the money that he'd asked for. He made references during those nine minutes that he was going to be her date, that he was going to take her to the bathroom, and they were going to have a date. And she believed at that 235 mark when he places the tip of the knife to her, her throat and backs her down that aisle into that back room that he believes is a restroom, she believes that he is going to assault her and harm her at that point. And it's quite clear to me through this investigation that without the officers arriving and rescuing her, she would have indeed suffered harm. The witness who observed the suspect enter the pharmacy, he made a choice to get involved. I can't stress how important that is, how critical that is to us and our job and providing the police service that we all strive to provide. He made a choice, he got involved, he saw something and he said something. And had he not done that, I'm certain this would have turned out much different. The pharmacist herself, she just had a re remarkable calm about her during the situation. 
not knowing what his intentions were or how this was going to end. Uh, the fear that she said she felt when she saw the officer and he grabbed her and placed a knife at her throat. She thought she thought he was going to kill her. And she remained calm. She bought herself some time until the officers could rescue her. And finally, the officers, their response to this situation was tremendous. They are both heroes. The fact that they got there, went to that pharmacy, knowing that there was a suspect back there, knowing that he was armed, that they did not hesitate to jump that counter to go back there to help someone, someone they never met, to do what, what officers do, and that's to help those who need help. They went back there at great risk to themselves, literally put themselves between an armed suspect, a dangerous individual, and the innocent people that were in that store. I'm thankful to both officers for their actions. And I know Ms. May, who has struggled with this incident, is grateful to the officers for their, for rendering their help to her in this situation. Having conducted a full, fair, impartial, and transparent investigation, and having considered today's grand jury decision, I have determined that the actions of Officers Rule and Sorber were lawful, proper, and in full compliance with departmental policy. Presently, both officers are receiving departmental counseling. They remain off on administrative leave, and they will be reinstated to full duty as soon as it is determined that they are fit and ready to return. And with that, I'll take a few questions. Chief, uh, Larry. So, Chief, Larry, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Chief, I, I want, explain again, at what point did she become free again when she was free? You know, her description is uh, that when he heard the officers, when he heard the, uh, the movement at the front of the pharmacy, that he immediately grabbed her up tight, put the blade to her throat. Um, she wasn't aware exactly what was happening until she saw the officer. She said she thought to herself that he was gonna, he was gonna cut her throat. And the next thing she knew, she saw him moving to her left down the aisle, getting to the end of the aisle, turning with a knife in his hand, in his right hand, heading towards the officers. She was shocked and immediately retreated back towards that back office area, that break room. Sure. To decide. Yeah, from the time the officers enter the pharmacy until he's in custody is eight seconds. Uh, the time that Officer Rule has to make that decision to fire those first shots is a blink of an eye. By the time he gets to that end of that aisle and has his weapon up and sees the suspect charging towards him, that suspect was in, is within less than 10 feet at that time. He makes the decision and fires those first two shots in rapid succession at the very last moment. He showed a great deal of restraint in assessing the threat and making the difficult uh, assessment, again, how he was attired, the black clothing, the black sock on his hand, and the black knife. But seeing that knife and making that decision, uh, by the time he was able to act, the suspect was literally on top of him. They were within um, three feet or less. She bagged the drugs up for him first, then the other one. Yes, the drugs, all the drugs that he demanded and asked for, she got, bagged them up. Uh, they were discovered there in the pharmacy in the bag. She also got all the money that he asked for at two different registers. And again, the part that terrified her the most 
was she knew that he had everything that he'd come for. He had everything that he'd asked for. She'd complied with every demand he made. And then he told her he was taking her to that back room. As you can imagine, they're, they're struggling with this. I did meet with his father and his stepmother and his mother and other family members earlier today. And I showed them the video, showed them this very same presentation. And I think they're still trying to process this. It's a lot for them. They're grieving. And. Uh, I think it's going to take them some time to to come to grips with this whole situation. Any other questions? Can, can you describe the knife again and hold it up for us? Sure. This is the knife. This is a 10-inch fixed blade skinning knife with a gut hook. And that's this feature on the top edge. It's a knife used for hunting, for skinning, and uh, as you can imagine, having this held to your throat, held to your back, and pointed at you for nine minutes was a terrifying experience for this woman. Before you leave, there'll be a DVD that will have the PowerPoint presentation the sequenced video that you saw here, and the original video from the multiplex system that shows uh, the coverage from all 16 cameras. That's the original video in the original format from the store. Thank you all for coming.